Student loan payment pause is going to end. It's going to end December 30. I'm extending to December 31st, 2022, and it's going to end at that time. It's time for the payments to resume. Second, my campaign for president, I made a commitment. I made a commitment that we provide student debt relief. And I'm honoring that commitment today. Using the authority Congress granted the Department of Education, we will forgive $10,000 in outstanding federal student loans. Hi, my name is Philip. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to go over what the student loan forgiveness plan is that Joe Biden just announced and how it will affect you if you have student loans and what you can look out for in the up and coming months. So President Biden and Vice President Harris announced recently that they were going to be forgiving $10,000 and up to $20,000 in uh, federal student loans. So I just wanted to show you guys the specifics and details and I'll link this this article below talking about the student debt relief plan and what exactly it means. So right now the student loan payments have been in forbearance ever since the pandemic in March of 2020. And according to this student debt relief plan, they are going to still be in forbearance, but they will be resuming in January 2023. So as you can see here that in this last sentence that you'll be notified when the process has officially been open and you can sign up at the Department of Education subscription page, which I'll also put a link in the description below. And we have until December 31st, 2023 to apply. So what is the Biden administration student loan debt relief plan? So part one, the final extension of the student loan repayment clause due to the economic challenges created by the pandemic, the Biden Harris administration has extended the student loan repayment pause a number of times, as we all know, and these payments are set to resume in January 2023. Part two of this student relief plan, providing targeted debt relief to low and middle income families. So, so this paragraph is saying that the, the U.S. Department of Education will provide up to $20,000 in debt cancellation to held grant recipients with loans held by the Department of Education and up to $10,000 in debt cancellation for non Pell Grant recipients. So in my case, I did not receive a Pell Grant when I went to school. So I would be eligible for up to $10,000. And I know this is like uh, something that's been tossed around here is how much are they gonna forgive? Because the language in here says up to $20,000 and up to $10,000. So are we gonna get the full 10,000, the full 20,000 if you have a Pell Grant? Uh, we just don't know yet, so we're gonna have to be on the lookout for that. I believe it's gonna be the full ten thousand and the full twenty thousand if you have a Pell Grant, but we'll just have to wait and see. And also, if you read the next sentence, it says borrowers are eligible for this relief if their individual income is less than one hundred twenty-five thousand or two hundred fifty thousand dollars for households. So, with this, we I'm assuming that they're going to base it off of the previous year's tax returns uh, for individuals and households, but uh, we'll get more details, I'm assuming, in the next coming months. So um, I'll be linking that subscription website in the description below, which it will look like this. And you simply just put your email address in and then you select the new federal student loan borrow update. So this will allow you to get updates on the uh, process and what's going on and just hit click next and you'll be in their system to, re to receive updates These are the frequently asked questions That they have came up with so how do I know if I am eligible for a debt cancellation to be eligible? Your annual income must have fallen below $125,000 for individuals or $250,000 for mar married couples or heads of households uh, If you received a Pell Grant in college and meet the income threshold you will be eligible for up to $20,000 in debt cancellation and if you did not receive a Pell Grant in college and meet the income threshold, you will be eligible for up to $10,000 in debt cancellation. So this next question, what does the up to in up to $20,000 up to $10,000 mean? So this is what I stated before. Um, you just never know what the government, what exactly they mean by these words. So it says your relief is capped at the amount of your outstanding debt. For example, if you are eligible for $20,000 in debt relief, but you have a balance of $15,000 remaining, you only receive 
fifteen thousand dollars in relief. Um, I actually know, which is interesting, uh, which is interesting in itself. But I know people who are actually taking out ten to twenty thousand dollars of student loans, and then because they know that they're getting these loans forgiven, they're just taking out that amount and using what the government's giving us to uh, get that money back, essentially. So it's free money. Do I agree with it? No, I don't think that's the right thing to do. But obviously there are people who find loopholes to everything. So what do I need to do in order to receive the loan forgiveness? Nearly 8 million borrowers may be eligible to receive relief automatically because relevant income data is already available to the U.S. Department of Education. Uh, if the U.S. Department of Education does not have your income data, the administration will launch a simple application, which will be available by early October. So here we can see that if the U.S. Department of Education doesn't have our income data, the administration will launch a simple application. Um, and it's saying it will be launched in early October. We'll just have to wait and see about that. And I'll keep you guys updated on that when that application does go live. Uh, if you'd like to be notified when applications open, please sign up at the Department of Education subscription page, which once again, this is this is the page, which I will link in the description below that you can just put your email address in and then select this new federal student loan borrow updates checkbox and uh, agree to this data privacy policy and click next. And then you'll be on the email list to receive updates. Borrowers are advised to apply before November 15th in order to receive relief before the payment pause expires on December 31st, 2022. So I'm definitely going to be making a note of that in my calendar. I'm probably going to apply when I when the application opens up in October, but this date we should be really aware of because we don't want to if you are getting your if you are getting your your loans or trying to get your loans forgiven. I wouldn't want to wait till the last minute when millions of people are, are also inputting and submitting their application uh, because it does expire on December 31st of 2022. So it's, the next thing that I have here is that the Department of Education will continue to process applications as they are received even after the pause expires on December 31st. So actually that's a good thing. So you can continue to submit your application, but I would just do it the earliest that you possibly can. So if they open up in October. I would look to submit your application then just so that you are ahead of the curve. And this talks about the public service loan forgiveness program, which uh, I'll make another video on because I know some people don't know what that is. Actually, if you worked for a public service and made uh, 120 payments working full time for the federal, state or tribal or local government, you'll be eligible to receive forgiveness on that. Once again, I'll make another video talking about that. Part three, make the student loan system more manageable for current and future borrowers. Income-based repayment plans have long existed within the U.S. Department of Education. However, the Biden-Harris administration is proposing a rule to create a new income-driven repayment plan that will substantially reduce future monthly payments for lower and middle income borrowers. So the rule would require borrowers to pay no more than 5% of their discretionary income monthly on the undergraduate loan. Uh, this is down from the 10% available under the most recent income driven repayment plan. So that's, that's a good thing. Uh, raise the amount of income that is considered non-discretionary income and therefore is protected from repayment. So guaranteeing that, guaranteeing that no borrower earning under 225% of the federal poverty line level about the annual equivalent of a $15 minimum wage for a single borrower will have to make a monthly payment. Forgive loan balances after 10 years of payments instead of 20 years for borrowers with loan balances of $12,000 or less. I can agree with that as well. And then cover the borrower's unpaid monthly interest so that unlike other existing income driven repayment plans, no borrower's loan balance will grow as long as they make their monthly repayments, even when that monthly payment is $0 because their income is low. So this is the Biden Harris administration is working to quickly implement improvements to student loans. So check back to this page for updates on progress. If you'd like to be the first to know, sign up for the email updates for from the United States Department of Education. And again, that's just this subscription, which I'm linking below. Just want you guys to know how you can get updates to that. So there are some good things. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm thankful that they are forgiving $10,000 of the student loan debt. For me personally, that's that's awesome because ten thousand dollars less than that I have to pay. I just feel like even at my age, when I was eighteen, coming out of high school, I did not know, my family did not know about the student loan process. Uh, I got 
scholarships, but that did not cover all of my college expenses. Making uneducated decisions wasn't the best thing. I've learned, definitely learned my lesson from that, but I just feel like coming out of high school, going into college, people or kids and students should be more educated, better educated on that, on the whole process. And not having these loans compound, have compounding interest will help as well because it's insane the stories I read about how people are paying 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars more than what they actually took out for their college education. I'll just keep you guys updated on any more new information that comes out. Once again, I would check out that subscriptions uh, website, which I will put down in the comment section below and just stay up to date with it so that if you are eligible, you can get some of your student loans forgiven. Of course, I know that this is gonna affect our economy and we're gonna have to pay it back eventually someday through taxes or inflation. So it does have a negative and adverse effect on us, taking it in a positive, at least it's something, and teach our kids about student, the student loan process and just making educated decisions going forward. So if you like this video, I hope appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and hit the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel as I put out videos about tech and personal finance every week. With that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.